Hi, welcome to my personal vlog. Uh, this is uh, Rishabh's vlog. Uh, if this is your first time coming here, uh, it's because you're probably interested in the title of this video. And, uh, you know, uh, I talk about fashion, cocktails, uh, travel experiences, personal experiences, coffee sometime maybe, I don't know. But uh, we're here today to talk about my favorite summer cocktail, which I'm gonna make for you guys right here. It is a white wine sangria. Uh, by no means is this my original recipe. I came across this recipe about uh, two, no, actually in 2020. So during the pandemic, that's when I picked up cocktail making as a hobby. And uh, I absolutely loved it. So I'm just gonna try and recreate this for you. It's pretty simple. It's a few ingredient cocktail. You can absolutely make it quickly. I have most of my prep ready behind me. I'm gonna walk you through it. But the reality is it's not a difficult recipe. It requires two things, wine and a specific brandy that I've absolutely come to love and a bunch of fruits. So if you have that ready, we are ready to go. That said, I do love fashion. So we're gonna do a little bit of a fit check here. I am wearing my Carhartt uh, shirt jacket or shacket as you might call it. This is uh, Kit's uh, Spider-Man drop, I believe. So it's a tea inside. Um, this jacket is my go-to. I do live in Canada, so of course, you know, this is uh, having a denim jacket or a denim shirt in your wardrobe is pretty standard. It's often called the Canadian tuxedo. Also, uh, I am not Canadian by origin. I'm a naturalized citizen of here. I am born and brought up in India, New Delhi. That's home. Uh, to those watching from India, namaste, hi. Uh, that is where uh, home is and that's where the heart is. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. But let's get to that drink, which is exactly what you're here for. So uh, for our cocktail, I will be using, I prefer to make a white wine sangria, typically with a Pinot Grigio. I knew I was making this video, so I didn't go all out to buy an expensive wine, but I did buy this one. It just looked really nice. It wasn't that expensive. It was about 18 or 19 Canadian dollars, so pretty cheap. But yeah, that's the wine I'll be using. But I do recommend using a Pinot Grigio. That's usually the best that comes out for a white wine sangria. The second ingredient that we'll be using here is, it's called Boulard and it is basically an apple brandy. So for those of you trying to find that, that's what it looks like. And it's called Boulard Grand Solage. I hope that's the right pronunciation. Please don't kill me if it's not. Uh, in the Canadian Elsevier, this is pretty regularly and easy to access. We're not gonna be using the whole bottle. That's why we have a peg measure here. We're gonna probably do four ounces in a bottle of uh, the white wine sangria. And with that, let's get to making it. So in terms of fruits, uh, I typically use a total of three kinds of fruits in my white wine sangria. This might be a bit of an overkill for the size of the jug that I'm making, but of course, you know, I had to make a video, so I had to cut these beforehand. I do use oranges, uh, lemons, and some red and green apple. Do use a mix of the apple because it enhances the taste and the color of the drink. So that's usually the way to go. The lemon is the yellow lemon, so prefer to do that. One lemon is more than enough. This is about one orange. They're typically cut in bite sizes so that you can actually enjoy them and eat them as you drink your sangria. Um, and with that, let's get into it. Do mix up the fruits a little bit. Don't just throw one thing after the other. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. This is my, um, you know, summer themed jug that I love making my sangria and this is specifically and only dedicated to making sangria. So with that, let's start doing this. So I put in a couple of the oranges. I'll throw in a bit of the lemon. As you can see, I'm not throwing everything in together. Let's do the red apple. The red and the green apple are mixed in here. Um, it's just easier to do it that way. So that's exactly what I've done. Uh, the one thing to note when you make these drinks or any sangria as a matter of fact is don't water down your sangria with the ice at home. Uh, you're gonna basically ruin the taste and let it sit and let the water take away the taste of the drink or the recipe that you've built. So by that means, you know, just, uh, just keep the jug with the alcohol and the fruits, even if you're keeping it in the refrigerator, cooling it, even if it's outside, that's totally cool. You can have the ice in your glass for the instant chilling effect. Now, once I have this much fruit in, the first thing to typically do uh, is add the brandy and it's intentional, right? You know why? Because it allows the fruit to absorb all the alcohol. 
typically what I like doing is, and that's exactly what I'm doing today, I'm actually making this because we're headed to a friend's place uh, later in the evening and we're doing a bit of a different sort of a potluck where I typically bring in the cocktails, uh, either I make it there or I carry it with me. That is a generous bit of brandy. All right. It was about four ounces. Actually, was it four? No, it was one 50 ml, one to third ounce. And I put in four shots of that with the fruit. So it tastes nice, smells nice. It is very aromatic. This might be a little bit strong, I'll be honest with you. But uh, anyhow, so we do that. Typically, if you want to really accentuate the flavor, right? Once you put in the fruit, you know, just, just do a little bit of, don't muddle it, you know, I'm just mixing it. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm not muddling it, I'm just sort of, you know, churning it. A good idea would be to let the fruit and the brandy sit for like an hour in the refrigerator, you know. Uh, that is really, really, really recommended. And the reason why I recommend that is you let the fruit absorb the alcohol and it makes the drink more potent, especially as you let the jug sit over the course of the hour that you share it with friends, family, or, you know, just, just, just maybe for one, I guess, but, uh, might be a quite a bit to drink for one person. So I do, um, suggest some caution there. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more fruits here because I think we do have the space to do that. I am not going to add the full apple. So based on the quantity that I've added, I think we've done about half a green apple and half a red apple. So that's what I'd recommend. I'm gonna go ahead and complete the lemon in this. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and complete the orange in this. So now we are fully done in terms of the pre-prep. For the sake of this video, I am going to go ahead and actually pour the wine in because I do want to complete the drink for you guys and show you how it looks and you know, it looks pretty nice. But uh, the reality is, as I said, let it sit for 30 minutes, enjoy it, let it get potent and then savor it over the period of time. All right, and with that, we are adding our wine. Okay. All right, with that, that's done. All right. We're gonna give it a nice stir, okay? Uh, make sure all the fruits are submerged in the alcohol. Let that keep going, let that keep going. This is no less alcohol by any means. This should serve one full, I mean, a glass and a half per person if you're gonna add ice later on. Another thing that's often recommended, I'm not showing that for the sake of this video because as I said, you know, I have to let this chill over the course of the next couple of hours before I take it with me to my friends. I uh, deliberately use a wooden spatula. It's a nice way of doing it. It's not too harsh on the fruits and doesn't break them. So that's another recommendation. So that's what it looks like. It looks really nice. It's appetizing, right? Yeah, it's a heavy one. I like it this way, but doesn't necessarily mean you need to go overkill on the fruits. A lot of people don't like too much fruits in their drink. You can do just the bare minimum. I'd say maybe do the half apples each, half an orange and half a lemon. That's about enough. You can keep the alcohol proportion the same. So as I said, I was using this peg measure, which is 50 ml or one by two third ounce. And I did four shots of the brandy and a full bottle of the Pinot Grigio, which I believe was uh, about 750 ml as it's typically the case. And with that, uh, how I would recommend is, you know, when you're beginning to serve it, uh, it's best shown here. So when you're beginning to serve it, take a glass like this. This is a stemless wine glass. I always prefer stemless wine glasses for the summer because, you know, uh, after you have that strong sangria, you might just flip that glass over and then all the good alcohol is probably on the floor. So use a stemless glass. Fill it with the fruits and that's what you use this spatula for, I guess. And then you pour it over that. You add a little bit of ice. If you like it fizzy, you can top it up with a little bit of club soda, but that's not necessary. It's how you like it. Some people like it with the soda, some people don't. Um, if I'm looking to do like two full glasses per person across a group of four, I'd uh, recommend topping it off with the club soda because that will ensure that. 
And with that, my friends, this is my, uh, you know, white wine sangria recipe. As you could see, it's very simple. Four ingredients, apple brandy, a bottle of Pinot Grigio, three fruits, and you're pretty much done. The prep takes about 10 minutes, I'd say, and the making takes about an hour if you include the 30 minutes of keeping the brandy and the fruits doused together. So that's that for today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more content and 